Okay, so now let's get into graphing some piecewise functions that are discontinuous. So they can be discontinuous by a couple different ways. We could have a jump discontinuity, uh, we could have a hole, as well as we could have um, some asymptotes, some vertical asymptotes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of cover these four examples. And again, I provided a link to a decimal calculator that we'll use just to kind of verify our results. So going back to what I did in example one is I'm basically just going to Again, follow the rules of what the graphs you know look like, and then apply you know the constraints. So, in this first one, I have y equals e to the x, and again, you're just thinking about graphing these separately. What does the graph y equals e to the x look like? What does the graph one over x look like? Now, um, let me actually do that in blue. I like using different colors here, y equals 1 over x. So again, if you're a little confused on this, uh, remember last lesson I have those examples of what the graphs look like, and you can just kind of follow those as far as the parent graphs, because in this example we don't have any transformations. So as y equals e to the x, that graph is going to intercept at 0, 1, and it's going to look like this. Actually, I should connect it like that. And I'll show you why, because hopefully I'm getting a little bit smarter with this. Now, obviously, my graph is not perfect. It's just a rough sketch. But we're only going to graph it when x is greater than 0. So anything to the left of that, I am not going to graph. I'm only going to graph when x values are greater than 0. In addition to that, I only um, x is not equivalent at 0. So therefore, that's going to be a whole. Now, the blue graph, y equals um, now the y equals one over x, if you remember that is a hyperbola, and that looks something like this. Right, rough sketch. But it says to only graph this values for, for values of x that are less than zero. So the graph to the right is when y values are greater than zero, so I'm going to delete that, and you can see that is going to be the graph. Now the other thing is we need to talk about the domain and range. Before we do that, um, Let's just make sure that, why can't I click on that? Let's just make sure that I graph them correctly. So what I did for each of those examples, I have them as A, B, and C, and I enter them in there. And looks like I, oh, I did graph that incorrectly. I'm an idiot. That graph, yeah, what am I doing? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the blue graph doesn't look like that. The blue graph looks like this got to slow down. The blue graph is going to look like that and that hyperbola, right? So therefore, for x values that are less than 0, that's going to be only those values. Good thing I'm checking my work, right? Got to slow down. Um, so now it makes these going to be values. And that's going to be important because that's going to affect our domain and range. Um, so let's go and look at the domain. So the domain looks like it's going to continue going to the left. But then it's going to get really, really close to 0. And we know 0 is not included, right? So my domain is going to be from negative infinity all the way to 0, but 0 is not included. And then from 0, it's going to go towards infinity. So it's union 0 to infinity. The range is basically saying, you know, how low is this graph going to how high is it going? So remember, on the reciprocal function, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So my range is going to be from negative infinity to 0, where 0 is not included. And then union, it looks like there's nothing going on at you know 1 half or 1 fourth. And then it looks like at 1, but again, 1 is undefined. That's the y value is 1, but then it continues up. So therefore, that's going to be from 1 to infinity. All right. All right, now let's go and look into the next one. The next one is a logarithmic graph, but with a reflection about the y-axis. So again, we're just going to sketch these individually. Right, so we're just going to graph, you know, y equals ln of negative x, and then graph the other one as y equals x cubed plus one, and then look at these restrictions. So, noticing the logarithmic graph, the if you remember the logarithmic graph with no transformations, looks something like that. So, if I'm going to reflect that about the y-axis, basically taking this graph and reflecting about the y-axis, we'll have my new y-intercept is over here. And so the graph is going to be a nice little perfect reflection there. And now I can just kind of erase this. It's supposed to be a perfect reflection. I can erase that values or that portion of the graph. And this one works because all of it says x has to be less than 0. So the whole graph is going to be is perfectly fine. 
Now the next one says x cubed plus one. So if you remember what the cube groove graph looks like, that's like the, um, the kind of S curve. And, but it's only gonna be for when it's greater than one. So let's kind of look at that graph. It's gonna look something like this. It's kind of a bad representation. But again, notice that it's only for x is greater than zero. So therefore, I am going to delete the portion where the x values are negative, which would be on this side, okay? And then again, remember, uh, zero is not defined, so I'm just gonna make sure I include a nice little hole there. So let's go ahead and check back our answer to make sure that is good. So I'll close that one. And you can see there's the nice little graph. Um, oh, I forgot to do my transformations. Slow down. X cubed plus one, right? So this whole graph needs to be shifted. And I wish I could graph that up, but I don't know. So let's shift that up one unit. Sorry about that. Looks like that. All right, so now let's go back to our domain and range. Uh, so our domain here is going to be the set of all values where it looks like it's going to negative infinity, it doesn't value at zero, and then it goes to infinity. So it's basically the same domain I had over here. So it's negative infinity to zero. Zero is not included because there's an asymptote there. It's not included there because there's a hole. And then zero to infinity. The range looks like it goes all the way down to negative infinity. And you can say it's undefined here, but if you look at there, there's a point there. So it's defined for this function. So the range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity because the graph, even though it's not defined here, it's defined there um, at y equals 1. And then it continues up going up. All right, so now let's go and look into some other ones. Here I have the square root of x plus 1. So notice that is going to be one that's a vertical transformation. So let's not make the same mistake here. And therefore, this is a quadratic with a vertical shift down one. So I'll graph the radical function that's greater than or equal to. So that's going to be equal. And that would look something like this. Again, I'm just sketching it, so don't worry about any points being correct. This is a parabola, so it's going to be a U-shaped graph shifting down one. But I'm only going to be graph it for values that are less than zero. So since my parabola would look you know, like this, I'm only going to graph it to the left. So it would be down negative one. It's not defined at zero. So my graph looks something like that, okay? Um, let's go ahead and check our answer here, just to make sure before I do my domain range, since I've already made mistakes on the first two. All right, I'm looking pretty good here, right? So now let's go ahead and define our domain and range. So our domain looks like both these functions are gonna be expanding left and right. So in this example, our domain is gonna be from negative infinity to infinity. Our range looks like the graph only goes down as far as negative 1, and it's undefined. It's not defined at negative 1. So therefore, I'm going to say negative 1, but then the graphs are going to continue going up into infinity, so that we go towards infinity. All right, last but not least here is uh, the absolute value of x minus 1. So that's going to be an absolute value function, which a vertical shift right 1. So you know, if we're just going to graph that. Now that's for only values, so let's graph that. Um, that graph looks like this, right, without any restrictions. But I'm going to restrict it for only values that are less than 0. So it's really only going to be for this graph. So therefore, I can just delete that portion. And that's going to be my lovely graph. Uh, for the next graph, that is going to be a y-axis. Let's just color that in red. I like doing the different. Um, that's equal to, less than or equal to, so that's why that point's included. This one is going to be greater than, so at 0, which is the uh, y-intercept. It's going to be an open circle. And then since it's only values that are greater than 0, I'm only going to graph to the right, which would be up 1, and then, oh, oops, sorry, that's negative. Uh-oh, I messed that up. Wait a minute. x is greater than 0. Yeah, so it has a negative slope. Oh, I picked a bad equation here. So this would be negative 5. So it would be down 1 and then to the right 2 because it's a negative slope. So the graph looks something like that. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, verify that real quick. And we can see that there you go. I just didn't really pick a big graph or a great graph to kind of represent that um, on there. But that works for us. Oh. 
And so now let's go ahead and identify the domain and range here. So the domain looks like it's going to set all values. Even though 0 is undefined here, 0 is defined there. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. My range, now this one's kind of interesting. The range goes from negative infinity all the way to negative 4, which is undefined. So let's do the red graph first. So negative infinity to negative 4. And then I'm going to do the other range in blue to kind of represent that. Now, nothing is happening between negative 4 and 1. But then at 1, it continues up to infinity. So since 1 is included, that's going to be a bracket 1 and then to infinity. And that would be the um, range for that. So that is one another way that we can have dis, uh, discontinuity here is with either um, jumps or looking at asymptotes, you know, or holes. They're discontinuous with an asymptote or a hole or as a jump. And so then the next what we'll do is we'll look at some more that are going to be dealing with some holes, so some different types of piecewise functions.